Welcome to Hascast 37. I mean, look at this hair. You're like, what happened to your hair? It's the same. It's all the way back. But, like, I, I just kind of combed it back after taking a shower because you got to stay clean, guys. You got to stay clean. So, this is Hascast 37. Uh, if you've been a day one Hascast fan, if you've been, uh, I just, thanks. But if you're new, uh, just let me tell you what Hascast really is. It's a, um, it's a podcast where we'll be reviewing the newest art that is being released. Art um, that I am selecting to review will be films, TV shows, going to movie news, TV news, rap news, rap albums, um, rap singles. And I'm going to bring like an old movie from my past. Like just like that I had, like I loved when a kid, when I was a, that I loved when I was a kid. And um, that'll be a nostalgia case. So it'll be like an old, an old movie from back then. Or an old movie in general. It could be either a new movie that's really old. Just nostalgia in general. Bringing in something old. And just chat, just reviewing that type of thing. So, you know, it is uh, October 1st. Um, and uh, school started. It's been busy and shit. But we're going to pump out a great podcast. And um, so, what surprisingly... What seems to be a recur- recurring theme in the art I will be reviewing tonight is violence against women. This is a horrible thing to do. This is a hor- and, But in this great modern age of feminism, it's popularizing in a good way that there should be a showcase of women's stories and they should be not afraid to come out with information about a bad man committing bad acts. The fascinating thing about the two pieces of art I will be reviewing um, that will be about uh, violence against women is one piece of art is debunking claims against women and one piece of art is showcasing through heavily documented footage those acts these are completely different things I will be reviewing so yeah the first piece of art I will be reviewing is a new documentary Netflix film American Murder The Family Next Door and uh, this was released yesterday, September 30th. And uh, we'll also, after we, I review that movie, we'll dive into some movie news, as usual. Then we'll review a new unexpected album from rapper and singer Toy Leans, which is an album debunking the claims that he shot Meg the Stallion. Then we'll go into a smear campaign as a result of this album being released. We're not gonna... We're, we're just gonna be, like, analyzing... And I'll just show with you a couple of names of a couple of articles about Tori and them many news sources trying to make Tori look bad. Um, and then we'll do a nostalgia case on Casino, and I'll talk about why I think that gangster movie is better than Goodfellas. All right, let's get into American Murder, The Family Next Door. It's a new Netflix film released yesterday, and uh, you know completely free if you part if you have netflix it's about the watts family murders um and this is a documentary which greatly details each aspect of the case of this family atrocity but you know how all those true crime documentaries are all like kind of um corny they're all like they have that that corny narration with the corny text showing up on the screen the corny montage of pictures and and just the normal the, you know, the sound effects of the, the camera flashing at the crime scene. No, 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 no. This is an interestingly edited documentary because it's done with no narration. It's just showcasing body cam footage as well as um, security footage and, new, and uh, news reports at the time of the incident, which was uh, two years ago, but it really was released now, 2020. And um, this is not no bullshit. This is actually a really well-edited thing. And it's only over an hour. It's only like one hour, 23 minutes. Um, not really a waste of time. Just a cool little like showcase of how a marriage can be so happy on social media. And there are pictures of happy scenarios and parties and vacation. But behind the camera, there's a lack of satisfaction. There's infidelity. There is sides being taken from the in-laws. And then the family atrocity occurred, which... What ultimately happened is the husband has a life sentence for killing his wife and the 
and uh, the two children, and also the wife was pregnant, so he basically killed like four people, or three and a half people, however you want to say it. Um, this was not really a waste of time. It wasn't really like all the other stupid true crime documentaries out there. Um, when he's convicted, like when they find out it's the husband um, through the interrogation footage, it's not just like, oh, end a movie. <laughs> like, no. It shows the online um, theories put out there and how this kind of went a little bit viral. Not, I mean, it was viral enough to get on Dr. Phil, the uh, lawyer who covered this. But, um,. It just kind of shows how there's theories about uh, who killed the kids. Was it the wife? Was it the um, husband? But, you know, it just shows many conflicting views and many different sides of the stories out there spread through social media um, at the time that this happened. Overall, short, cool Netflix film. It's not a short film. It's a feature film. Hour, 23 minutes, but it is short. It's not like... It was, wasn't that much. It was only like, yeah, you know... Um, I'm going to give it the Kino Steel of Approval. Stamped. Kino Steel of Approval. Really dug it. Um, yeah, if that guy, like, handles, like, the documentary about, like, someone very famous or something else, like, I'm down to watch that. Like, I wonder what, I wonder what, what this guy can do, like, with other documentaries. Like, what if he does a documentary about the George Floyd protests? God rest him. Um, but, um, that would be interesting. Like, I want to see what this director of this documentary could do something more modern that happened more recently because you know the world has been hectic maybe we'll do one about the fires i don't know but i really dug the director and the editor cool stuff check it out on streaming netflix it was released today all right let's get into some movie news i just got a little one quick little thing i want to talk about barry jenkins so barry jenkins um will direct lion king 2 don't hate on this don't hate on this. Don't be like, oh, well, I did not like the first Lion King. It was just CGI, this, that, and the third. I really wasn't a fan of it either. It wasn't anything new, and there was less emotion in it. But I am proud that Barry Jenkins is kind of getting his huge mainstream break. While he did win a lot of awards, I want to consider him completely, completely, completely mainstream until now because he's directing, you know, obviously, a Dis this is a Disney franchise. This is a Disney franchise. So he'll be directing Lion King too. He did If Beale Street Could Talk. Okay, he's a great filmmaker, and um, he also did Moonlight and other other really well-made films that won a lot of awards, but I'd say If Beale Street Could Talk is the most impressive film he's done, and it aspects uh, showing the um, corrupt justice system is so interesting, and it's all set in the 70s. Cool soundtrack. I love the soundtrack on that, too, and, and you know, I love cool relationship movies and it's a great relationship movie but it shows a very sad thing happen as a, as the cause of the bad thing happen being a corrupt justice system and the horrible racial profiling in the police system at the time of the 70s and it's still going on today sadly we sh should not be having these horrible justice systems someone should do something about that and i love and in terms of very socially productive movies that showcase um a disenfranchised members of society this was a great example of that and i would have to say if beale street could talk is one of my favorite movies in you know the year it came out i believe it was in 2018 or 2019 but I, it was released on limited release in like late of 20 i'll look this up right now but i if beale street could talk yeah, released in 2018, but they released it on January in, like, wild release on 2019. But I remember it was a great movie to watch. Definitely check it out. So, I'm excited for Lion King 2. What do you think? Are you, proud? Are you excited for Lion King 2? I don't know. I am. So, Toy Lanes dropped the new album. He didn't just get on Instagram Live and say, I didn't shoot Meg the Stallion, which, of course is a rapper um, who allegedly got shot by him and uh, suffered some damage. But after she suffered some damage, she went and shot one of the biggest music videos of her career, um, WAP. And uh, I didn't see any uh, things there, but this uh, this is like, a this album just debunks everything. Um, 
and it's a beautiful album. You can see what what I've seen in Tori's career. Obviously, is the the obvious um, T Pain, Drake, um, you know, Kanye, uh, inspiration that beautiful auto tune. But he also switches it to his. He I mean he hasn't he doesn't have this original style, but he still makes great stuff and comes up with a sharp line here or there, uh, referencing how he did not shoot Meg the Stallion. He says, how did you get shot and it didn't, and the bullet did not hit any bones or tendons or how could you identify the shooter if I was sitting behind you in the car? Like, okay, I don't know. Like, I don't know what really went down, but I feel like there's uh, a campaign against due to the fact that he is an independent artist and um i'm gonna have this tell you uh, fuck out of here like you know uh free my man's tory uh innocent until proven guilty and everybody when when there's a rumor spread around is guilty until proven innocent because it makes the day less boring like how fucking boring like i'm not gonna be like oh i hate social media that's so hypocritical i advertise all my stuff on social media but like come on now have some dignity like respect that he and and try and listen to his side of the story if everybody wants to explain something to you they don't have to they they don't have to do a whole like press campaign about it just just relax listen to the album cool album half it's like this slow sort of weekendy r&b and then half of it's this intense trap um piano driven thing what also was beautiful about this album is the awesome news clips in the beginning um i love that i loved how he showed news clips of people reacting to the news and how people are like uh they even had, had dj academics in there and they were all like the best thing is is just for tory lane is to go away they telling my man's tory to go away did you not listen to liddy you know did you not listen to lord knows did you not listen to broken the minute he makes hit records man Tory Lanez is one of the greatest rappers and singers and this old I've always said you know he's just he, he lives in the shadow of uh, many of his contemporaries who try and mix that sound of rap and R&B he lives in the shadow of, of uh, Drake and Kanye and um, Bryson Tiller um, but now he's sort of proving that he can be better uh, than a majority of new rappers out. I'm not saying he's better than Drake. He's not better than Drake. He's not better than Kanye. He's not better than Bryson Tiller. But he's starting to prove that even when that 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 when a horrible thing, a horrible blaming situation happens to him, he he can not leave who he actually is, and he can defend himself from the horrible situation that is being a man being blamed for such a horrible act. The Lumin and he even said this in the album. He said, "Illuminati trying to get me." I feel like Tori might know something, and um, a part of him getting his master's in independent thing, he wanted to leave this sort of corrupt satanic music industry, which I theorize is what's going on, but I don't know, but I think he was just like, I'm just going to leave, I'm going to leave, and um, Meg Thee Stallion had a lot of horrible things happen to her this year with her label situation, and they were they promised Meg, and they were like, um, we'll get you out of this, just blame my guy, he's trying to leave our... Uh, record label cult just blame him for something but i don't know this is just i'm just bullshitting about what i think i i would definitely recommend looking at certain people such as uh miami daylight's um opinion on all of this because uh, there's many conflicting views but a majority of all the mainstream uh music publications and uh critics such as sean c and fantano would have to just say, oh, I'm not going to review the album. Uh, he's such a scumbag. I hate Tori because he shot. Give him a chance, guys. Give him a chance. Give Tori a chance. For your moment, it's Tori. And then we're going to get in the smear cam- the slander campaign. I'm going to look up a Tori. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to look up Tori Lane's news. And, and let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. There, it's all just like Tory Lanez, their Daystar will hit with sales decline. Um, and, 
and they're they're trying to say he's trying to capitalize off the situation um and they're like five ways you can remove toxic artists from um your spotify thing and they're they're um trying to like say that he is like a toxic artist like and they're they're comparing him with x about how he's a horrible person that you shouldn't listen to his music and um yeah like it's just like come on now come on now you can't do that you can't be doing that and and he's starting to sue uh news sources for having a smear campaign against them and they're like five reasons why you, they're making articles called five reasons why you shouldn't listen to Tory Lane's new album come on how immature is that like come on you can't just smear and slander this bull like he's just trying to show his side of the story like consider him give him a chance I don't know I don't know everybody's like oh you gotta separate the real life from the art art is a representation of life Life can be a representation of art sometimes. Respect both ways art can be shown. <laughs> like, come on now. Come on now. What do you think of um Twilane's music? And um, I'm to give you. A th- I already list the three songs that I like of him, but Meek Mill really put me on. I would like to see him do a song with Drake though. That would be cool. And also on this album, he gets a lot of them he talks a lot about um you know like other he disses other people disses chance the rapper he calls chance the rapper irrelevant he disses jr smith uh bun b uh kalani for taking him off of her album so many great things that happened with this uh record and overall all i can say is positive things about this record and it's an album of the year contender and by the way We'll be doing a awesome, spectacular Hess Awards at the end of the year. I had one last year. It was nice, but I think I'm going to stream this one to a YouTube Live. I haven't been doing Twitch streams lately, but I don't know. It's just a hard thing to set up, and I'm really getting busy with school um, and all that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Illuminati trying to get my man's Tory. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Um. Nostalgia case. Roll it. Alright, we got Casino. Alright, man. This is a good one. Um. It's a film released in the mid '90s about the uh, how the mob controlled a lot of casinos in Las Vegas, and it's about how an era changed of how casinos are run and how it used to be a sort of um more independently owned business model, and then they completely got controlled by um, large companies, and it kind of sort of became like Disneyland. You know what I mean? It's just like you know, it's just gone. Like, like it's no like. There's no independently. Um, I mean, there probably is some, but a majority. Of it, it just shows the change of thing. And it sounds like a documentary, but it's not. It's like complete gangster shit. It's like complete gangster movie about how the mob just came in and started like taking money from the casinos and uh, getting people that didn't have gaming licenses to be in there. And obviously, it stars um the three biggest actors at the time: Sharon Stone, Robert De Niro, and Joe Pesci. Now, Joe Pesci, this is my favorite Joe Pesci performance of all time. Nah, I mean, almost tied with uh, Home Alone. Home Alone is, like, one of the greatest creations ever. Like, I'm going to keep it stacked. Um, I'm going to say keep it stacked lately. Keep it stacked, 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 keep it stacked. It's just like what you're saying. I'm keeping it real, being no lying, no cap. But nobody says no cap anymore. I actually heard No Cap is actually making some very good new music, and that it, even though it started off as like his name just sounds like a joke, like your name's No Cap, it's a joke. <laughs> like, are you serious? No, um, yeah, Casino. It's just like well structured. It's longer. It's more grand on the scale. There's more narrations. There's these cool like narration 
snapshot like these cool like narrations of um over a montage of a era or a showcase of like someone moving into town and starting to rob this person my favorite scene is when joe pesci is like robbing somewhere and there's like a narration where he's like ah yeah i used to rob people but i didn't like the people i was ripping off looking at me so i used to turn the fucking pictures around like so they weren't looking at him as he was robbing them because their pictures were there and it's just like dude that's hilarious and clever and uh shout out to uh martin scorsese who directed this martin scorsese he's directed he has maintained his relevancy since the early 70s with his films. Um, let's just list off about 10 Martin Scorsese films. And you'll be like, he did that, he did that, he did that, he did that, he did that. Whoa, bro. Whoa, bro. All right. Let me think of one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go from now to back then. Uh, recently, he directed The Irishman. He directed The Wolf of Wall Street. He directed Hugo. He directed Shutter Island. He directed The Departed. The Departed. Um, The Aviator. Gangs of New York. Um, Casino. Age of Innocence. Goodfellas. Cape Fear. After Hours. The King of Comedy, which heavily inspired the Joker. Um, Taxi Driver. Um, and Mean Streets, and Goodfellas, like, no shit, Goodfellas, like, hey, yo, like, be, probably one of the biggest gangster movies ever, um, like, after yeah, Godfather, everybody's like, Goodfellas better than Godfather, I don't know about all that, Chief, everybody says that Godfather 2 is better than Godfather 1, no, like, I mean, I want someone to come on the show and debate me on that, I, I have some good points about the character development of the Godfather, um, compared to, like, it, it I mean, it's just about the characters becoming good people and com- becoming bad people. Like, it, it's cool and stuff and, the, you know, the subtext and all of that. But I feel like just the structure of The Godfather 1 is way better than Godfather 2. But we're here to talk about Casino. It's just one of those movies where, like, it's... You laugh at a scene, and then after something happens, you feel bad that you laughed at it. Like, you're like, shit, god damn, bro. Damn. That's a bit harsh. Did you really need to do him like that? Did you really need to put him, in, put his head in a vice, squish him, and then his eyes come out because he shot up a place and um, killed somebody that should not have been... Yeah, that's kind of... I mean, you're kind of punishing someone that did something bad. But it's just the way he did it is so slow and painful. And it's just a cool little gangster flick. But um, overall, it's my favorite gangster movie. But would I consider it the best? No, but but I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to debate someone. What is better, Goodfellas or Casino? A lot of people like the the more homey environment in um, Goodfellas. Like they like how it's like more about the family, more about the the friendship and the loyalty. But Casino is more like intense. But like Casino is like Martin Scorsese had five cups of coffee, bunch of Adderall, a bunch of cocaine, and just went insane and just crafted this like super fast movie and it was just like whoa it's like it's like when the guy puts on the the thing in the the uh, glasses and spy kids and he gets transported into the game and that, that weird time lapse of everything around him happens it's like whoa it's just so intense and there's like this rolling stone soundtrack real good soundtrack that represents the era that this was set in and overall solid solid flick definitely check out casino i really mess with this movie um that's mainly all we have to talk about um i did want to mention something about this little creative collective i was starting um it's called the mad snake creative collective uh i'm my my media inc is always going to be existing content will always be being released through this beautiful venue of uh, this be- beautiful like place on the internet where I'm able to express these beautiful opinions and critiques of this beautiful art that is being released. I'm just grateful. All this art is still coming out in such a weird and horrible time. But um, I want to create some of that art too. I wanna I want to make my own art. I want to make what I'm critiquing. I'm never gonna stop critiquing. Don't say, oh, Mike's just gonna make movies now. He's gonna become a big star. I can become. I can be both. 
and what I've, I've been linking up with a couple of my friends like um Jace of SRG um, I'm gonna make an album with him the rap album and I'm gonna make some movies with my brother Drew Dumchus who's been on the um, show has discusses a couple times in the earlier has cast he's like a day one homie um and we're gonna be making some cool art together and but we're gonna be releasing under mad snake creative collective which is owned by mike mead incorporated so expect albums short films music videos cool skits might want to do a couple pranks over there but i want to make i want to take myself seriously over there and more carefully release everything this is just me having fun interviewing people critiquing certain people in their art and just having fun making points about this that and the third but them on me i want to be made i want to i want to be critiqued i want to be critiqued over there over in the specter of you know the mad snake creative collective overall i'm just glad you guys are still listening and enjoying yourselves with your life and if you just have any hot takes in the comment sections i'm all ears i'll love to hear uh if you like if you completely disagree with what i think about daystar if you think that american murder is a bad or good movie just tell me guys what you think if you are not excited for lion king 2 if um if you think goodfellas is better because you know meet me down in the comment section i'm ready to talk about it i'll be casting out my thoughts to you on the next task cast it's excellent man <laughs>